Let's go to Anna in H-Town, Houston. What's up, Anna? Hi, I'm doing okay. How are you? Good. Go Astros. What's up? <laughs> well, I'm calling because um, I love your show, and I've listened to a lot of different things that have helped me, and um, I need some guidance here. I really feel like I'm, I don't know what to do right now. Let's do it. Point. Let's do it. Uh, Let's figure it out. So I don't know where or how to draw boundaries for my own health around my grandmother and helping her and basically uh, providing all of her emotional and physical needs. I make nearly all of the decisions in her life. Um, and it's making, taking a major toll on me emotionally, physically. I'm hyper stressed all the time. I can feel it in my body. Um, I've had to, I've started paying for the very expensive yoga membership because I have to find a way to like calm myself um, I, I'm just, I'm hopeless at this point, um, because I feel stuck. Um, where's your afraid. kids? Okay. Um, I'm her granddaughter. So she only had my mom and okay. my mom just passed away in September. Oh, actually. Geez. I'm so sorry. Yeah. Was that uh, unexpected? Yeah, well, yeah. Um, not, not shocking, but unexpected in that we didn't expect it to happen. Um, they, this goes into that, but her and my mom both sort of had a drug problem, okay. like prescription pills. Mm -hmm. And, um, I made peace with the fact years ago that my mom was probably going to go that way. Mm -hmm. And, um, yeah. that's what we think happened. Um, my grandma actually found her. They lived together. My mom was living with her for the past six to seven years okay. and they were kind of enabling each other in this addiction mm -hmm. and in a lot of dysfunction. And, um, so my grandma found her uh, one morning. And, um, so that's, that's kind of where we're at. There's been a huge shift. Obviously mm -hmm. my mom was living with her for the past six to seven years, at least being there in the house to make sure she had meals. My mom could cook a little bit. Mm -hmm. Um, my mom could clean up a little bit. My mom was someone in the house to like wake her up and be aware if my grandmother fell or looked like she might be not waking up and maybe took too many pills and my mom would call 911. It was sort of like a safety valve there, you know, and now my mom is gone. Um, as dysfunctional as that was and how much stress my mom's addiction and my grandma and everything and her addiction caused everyone that's not there anymore. Right. And, um, I've been taking care of like the financial responsibilities for my grandmother mm -hmm. for a long time. She kind of checked out of it, um, was unable to keep up with it. When I stepped in, it turned out my mom was stealing tens of thousands of dollars from her of over course. the years. Yeah. yeah. It, so um, he, what I'm going to say is going to sound harsh. Okay. And I want you to like, know, like you and I are just hanging out. Okay. So I'm, I'm talking with you. All right. Not at you. If your grandmother as an adult, as a, an adult who's struggling with addiction, is going to act like, or is in a place where she is acting like a child. You are a caretaker. Mm -hmm. You have to not be an enabler and you have to be willing to make the hard decisions that parents have to make for their kids. What do I mean by that? You have to take an honest assessment of her um, financial situation. And that may mean that you got to sell her house and move her into a, a living facility because you've, okay. you've acknowledged it. You cannot control. I mean, you don't have the skill set for it. You're not, you're right. not a stay at home nurse. You can't, you're not living there 24, seven, 365, right? You see what I'm saying? Yes. Yeah, I do. I, I, I don't have the skill set for it for sure. I don't yeah. have the capacity and I don't have the skill set. The sort of sticker is that I can't make her do any of those things. It's exactly She's, right. And you know, I can't force her to sell her house. She has the ability. I, I mean, I don't have legal rights over that. She is. Right. She's with us. She's a lucid person. If I were to take that to court, I don't have the money to make that happen in court, even if it would happen. But here, here's the deal. That means you have to make another hard choice. <laughs> Choosing to. See, at this, I understand. I've heard you say this once to a caller that um, someone in her family was treating her like an anxiety med every time they picked up the phone. <laughs> <laughs> and that so hit me because that's what my grandma does like times 10 for like all her stress. 
her problem. Yes, you, she, she has just taken the the dance she did with your mom. Yes. And let's be very, very honest, and this is hard to say. I can't imagine a scenario where a parent who is co-involved with a kid in reciprocal drug use and support, that that relational dysfunction hasn't happened for so long that mom learned it somewhere. Right? I'm not sure if I totally, like, you mean the, the relationship between my mother and my grandmother. I'm saying there must have been an issue between grandmother and mother to where your oh, mom said, yeah. the best way I can get through my day is by is by checking out with drugs. Yeah. My mom had, yes, yes. My mom had okay. lots of problems. My grandmother had lots of problems. Right. From and the so time she was young. Your yeah. grandmother lost her dance partner and she just picked you up and said, let's go. And you are dizzy from spinning around so much, right? Mm. Yes. And so what you have to say, you have to, you've heard me say this on the show a bunch. You've got to let go of grandmother for a second, go over, punch the DJ in the nose or unplug the DJ system. Um, turn all the lights on and look at your grandmother and say, I'm not dancing with you. If you want to live and you want to have a good life, I'm going to help you make those decisions that way. If you want to have somebody that every day you wake up and you just drag through the mud, who is serving as your human Xanax, that you want to do drugs with, I'm not that person. Oh, I yeah. I mean, the drug. I, I know. I, mean, I know, I know, I know you don't do drugs. I know no. that. I, but no, no, no. But she, I don't even know that she is really doing it anymore. Over the last three months or so, I haven't really seen that happening. I think that was a function of my mom being around a okay. large part of it. I do think that um, is yet to tell, but at this point, that's kind of what I'm seeing. Let me say it, let me say it this um, way. Let me say it this way. Um, propping up your grandmother will not fix your relationship with your mom. Okay. <laughs> um, making, I, making, trying to make right right now doesn't heal that hole that's inside of you. Yeah, I am definitely dealing with a lot. Yeah, I am dealing with my relationship with my mom you now are. that she's gone, for yes. sure. I'm, yeah, trying to come to terms with a lot. And I know that because her. you are letting this duty that you've created for yourself pull you underwater. You're going to drown. I know. <laughs> but you're drowning trying to save a ship that has no interest in being saved. And But how do I do that? She's a, like, at this point, she's a, she's a senior who, like, really, she legitimately needs help and care and will she accept your help and care sometimes to a certain extent i want her to get like a home health person to come mm -hmm. three times a week to you know be there and help can she and afford that she can we can make that work um at first she didn't want to she said it was too expensive um so my friend my, goes, my friend henry cloud said and this is a harsh f way he says it but he's right your grandmother's never had to get home health nurse or have anything that she didn't want because she always had somebody there. So the way Henry says, Dr. Cloud says is, um, and he's usually talking about kids, is they got to get some problems. Mm. And at some point, your grandmother has to understand, I love you and I will be the, the I'll be the, uh, the care manager, but mm. I can't be the caretaker. So I will make sure that we have a good contract with the home health nurse company and that somebody's there. And if somebody didn't show up, you let me know and I'll make that phone call. I cannot be your home health nurse. And so hear me say, I can't come over three times a week. Mm. And as an adult who's lucid, she gets to make her decision. Well, then I guess I'm just going to fall and die here by myself. And there are some yeah. adults that will make that choice. And it's, I feel like that's the choice she's making. It's heartbreaking. But unless yeah. you want to go to court and have her civil rights taken away, mm -hmm. drowning yourself in this sort of pseudo hero thing isn't going to, isn't going to help anybody. You both end up underwater. I do feel that sense of like, and people say to me, well, just, just stop or don't do it. You're, you're hurting yourself and you can't do it all. And it's like, I can't imagine where I don't, feel responsible for her. I just can't imagine. A I know, way of but being you are a person just by listening to your story. You're a person who either or is everything. Mm -hmm. I have to have the most expensive yoga class or I can't make it. That's not right. <laughs> yeah. 
That's the, that's a way you have chosen to justify having a really rad yoga class. And that's great. <laughs> cool. But there's, a, there's steps in between. Either I go over there every day to make sure she's not dead and she's taking her medication or this whole thing. That's not true. You can go every, you can go every Sunday. I'm coming over for breakfast every Sunday. Whether she wants you there or not, I'm coming over. And I'll listen to you complain away and tell me all the things. About, great. I'm not going to be your emergency home health nurse. Every time you call me, I'm just going to call 911. And the moment you're ready for in-home care, I will be, I'll be here to help set that up. You see what I'm saying? Like, so there's middle ground between this. I've got to be her everything. I've got to be doing things that I'm not even qualified to be doing, like nursing mm-hmm. things and medication management, all that stuff. I'm not even qualified to do that. It's either that or I just, your friends are like, well, you just got to tell her just to screw off. She's got to do it. Man, you can't do that either. I get, I get what you're saying. Yeah. But at some point you have to say, hey, grandmother, I am over my head. I can't manage. I want you to have the best possible life in the last few years of your life. And it's exceeding my ability to manage it. I, I have expressed that to her, um, very, recently a lot, you know, very clearly. Um, um yeah, yeah. I'm I, okay. of late becoming more clear. Yeah. Okay. Because I, I'm figuring out more how it's affecting me mm-hmm. and her response is sometimes like, kind of like you said, like this very extreme either, or like, well, then I'll just take you off all the accounts and you won't have to worry about any of it. And like kind of manipulative, that's you know? a child. And that's right. It's acting like a child. That's right. Yeah. And here's, and the, here's I, the deal. If she takes you off, she takes you off. Mm-hmm. And that will be heartbreaking and you'll have to grieve it. And it'll be so sad. And there's not a freaking thing you can do about it. I, I'm afraid someone's going to take advantage of her. If they, I'm not there. Listen, they no. will. They will. But, uh, I, you're creating scenarios that are never going to come or that might come down the road if this happens and this happens. And that means this is going to happen and you are suffering them in the present. You're creating things down the road that are going to be issues if this happens and this happens. And here's what someone's going to take advantage of her and you're going to have a stroke. Both are true. And so here's what I'll communicate to you. The greatest gift you can give your grandmother right now is that you be well. That you have enough capacity to help her the, to the best of your ability. And that means you have to define capacity. What do you need? What do you actually need? And you have to define what help, what help you, can, you can offer. And fine, I'll just take you off everything. Well, grandmother, you can do that. You and I both know that that's immature and that you're just throwing a temper tantrum. If that's what you choose to do, then yeah, you're an adult. You can choose to do that. I hope you won't because I love you and you're my only family I got left and I want to continue to help out. There's just limits to how I can help. And I know that there are, I mean, gosh, there's nothing more painful than, than, than people in our lives who make choices and we know that those choices are hurting them. And at the end of the day, we can do very little about it. But I do know that going to war with yourself, when your body is telling you, you can go no further. And you're like, no, I'm going to keep going. It's unsustainable. And then, man, you've heard me talk about this. You end up resenting the fact that your grandmother exists at all. And that's not where any relationship wants. No one wants their relationships to end up there. And so make it clear. Here's what I need. Make it clear. Here's how far I'm willing to go. Make it clear. Grandma, I'm still going to show up on this day, but I can't keep coming these days. Express your needs very, very clearly. I would probably recommend writing them down and handing them to her. Here's my schedule when I can start coming to visit you. Here's what I'm willing to do. And at the end of the day, man, the things you can't control, you're going to have to let go. And you're going to have to grieve the fact that you're having to let it go. And I'm sorry, you got brought into this dance here at the very end. And man, the music is already just going, going, going. And your grandmother's got a way of dancing. And either she's going to change in short order or there's going to be mess down the road. I'll tell you this. She is the luckiest grandma on earth to have you as her granddaughter trying to help out. She's lucky to have you, Anna. But make sure Anna is well in this process.